picking up our half cow order. So we're gonna take you guys along with us as we go to the farm and we pick up the half a cow that we've ordered. We're also gonna talk a little bit about how I actually got connected with the farmer through a platform that you can also use. And we're gonna take all of that order home, open it up, see exactly how much half a cow is, and we'll have a bit of a chat about what we're gonna do with it. It's Rachel here from Bushedge Homesteading Australia and I am with the family in the car going for a bit of a road trip to pick up a half a cow order that we made about a month ago on a platform called Farm at a Fridge. Through that platform I was able to make an order for all different sizes of bits of cow so I could have done like a whole cow or a half a cow quarter or an eighth and they even have like these little try and see boxes as well but I like the idea that if I ordered a whole half I could get a lot more variety of cuts and you do get to kind of choose on there like how you want each piece of meat cut and I could also get it packed for our family of four as well by getting the larger size so um, yeah that's something that is a way to be able to connect farmers with customers like me because I do like the idea of being able to buy from a farmer kind of know where the meats come from um, there's obviously also been a lot in the media over late recent times as well about a lot of farmers not getting good prices for their meat and things like that so it also seems like it's a pretty good option for making sure that farmers get a bit of a fairer price on stuff so for those of you that have been watching us for a while you probably know that we do raise some of our own meat on the property so we've got our own sheep and you know we process those on the property ourselves um, we also have done kind of ducks and chickens and quails we don't do a lot of those because it is a fairly time consuming thing though but we definitely do the sheep and put those in the freezer every year but beef is not something that we can raise on our property so i liked the idea that this platform allows us to connect with a farmer and you know we can kind of get a bit of an idea of where the meats come from I liked the description of the farmer that we're going out to today. So we're actually going out to East Gippsland, to this particular property to pick up the cow. And these guys say that they kind of raise their cows on the grass, they finish them on the grass as well, um, rather than doing kind of like the, the grain feeding and stuff towards the end. And that sounded like a pretty cool concept. And uh, I think they try and do, you know, fairly low chemicals and stuff like that as well. So I think the first trick here is actually finding where we're going. Is this on the map where we're supposed to be okay let's have a look is this the one 13 20 that's the one all righty so what do we end up with six seven eight nine boxes so that gives a bit of an idea on how much space you need in the car if you're getting half a cow got a good tip from the farmer here that we should have brought a blanket along with us which is what we did one of these woolen ones and basically we're just going to use that over the meat while we get it home to keep it nice and cool a bit of extra insulation so thank you for that tip <laughs> well how awesome was that we just had a chat for about probably the last 45 minutes with the lovely farmer from Sheffield's Cottage and she shared so much amazing stuff about kind of the cows that they're raising and kind of like how the meat comes together and the whole process Now we didn't film too much at the property there because it is their home and you know obviously trying to be respectful of privacy and all that sort of stuff as well but um yeah I definitely want to loop you in on a bit of the stuff that she was kind of sharing so the cows that we got today uh well the half a cow we got today is one of their black angus it was wasn't it yep um and they kind of raised them through the hills around here and she was kind of commenting on the fact that you know this year the meat is you know really good meat to the point even the butchers have kind of commented on how good the meat is lots of marbling and stuff like that so pretty excited about the fact that 
that's the meat that we've ended up in our freezer with this year and a big part of that is because it has been like such a really wet summer and you're probably noticing around here that put down the uh, the window so you can kind of see a bit of a clearer view but it's super super lush and green around here at the moment and that means the feed has just been really really good for, for all the cows probably over and above what it is even normally and it is really good country out here so I think even in a normal year we'd be still getting some pretty good meat off that farm. It was really interesting kind of like hearing a bit about the process for them as a farmer because it is obviously a little bit different to your normal traditional purchasing of, of meat um, or the sales of meat I should say that they would have as a farmer where you know normally they kind of raise the, the animals and then kind of send them off and you know all the rest kind of happens separately but for them there's obviously a bit more work that's involved because you know selling through that farmer to fridge platform it means that they're kind of managing taking the meat off to abattoirs and um, you know the management of the butchers and stuff like that as well so it's just kind of something to be a little mindful of if you do kind of buy through one of these platforms I think some people do kind of get a bit hung up on that sale yard price at the moment and think that that's what meat's going to come from a farmer for but you know that's obviously not a sensible expectation because they're doing a lot of work to actually get it on your plate and that's kind of I guess a lot of that stuff that normally is that difference between the sale yard price and and that price that you end up paying in a supermarket but uh this way obviously a bit more of that money ends up in the farmer's pocket but they are definitely doing a bit more work to uh, make that happen as well so you probably did see I grabbed a couple of quick clips as we were packing the meat into the car and I should say that before we actually came here there was really good communication with uh, the farmer as well through that uh, farmer to fridge platform there is like a bit of a chat thing that you can do with the farmer if you've got any questions about your order and I must admit, because this was the first time, like for us, and we didn't really know what to expect with the pickup, I did kind of ask probably a few more questions than normal. I had some questions about the, the fat and the offal and the bones. Um, and I also had some questions about how that meat would be packed up for us to bring it home. Because I wasn't sure if we were going to need to bring, you know, like a big esky or cooler box or, you know, even have the egg all empty so that we could put frozen meat and stuff in it. But yeah the way that she had it all packed up for us ready to go was fantastic there's really you know clear marking on you know what's kind of for the fridge and what's for the freezer and I should say that normally it is all fresh but I did ask for it to be a little bit different because we were away this weekend um, it was so accommodating and that was um, you know frozen for the sausages and the mints and stuff like that um, and everything else is nice and fresh so we'll be able to have a closer look at all of that when we get home but those cooler bags should keep everything nice and cool and there was also ice packs that were popped in there as well and there was also that wonderful tip when I did ask that question before we headed out where she kind of mentioned if we brought a big woolen blanket or a quilt or something like that and we put that over the boxes that that would also just provide a bit of extra insulation and that'd keep it nice and cool as well. Now, I should mention that even though we're road tripping today, we actually didn't need to go and pick this up. It was something that I actually wanted to go and do so that we could go and kind of meet the farmer and kind of see where the meat's coming from. But we could have got it delivered through the platform as well, just for a bit of an extra cost. And they've got cool trucks and things like that so that you can actually get the meat delivered to home if that's what you prefer. Whew, that was a lot. Um, I think that was pretty much everything that we kind of talked about just yeah had a wonderful chat about just kind of even just using the the different cuts of meat and they do tallow and stuff like that as well which is one of the things that we're looking to do so it was just really lovely having a general chat as well with someone that's kind of quite like-minded they obviously uh you know enjoy what they do out there and uh yeah we are gonna get some yummy meat to take home so let's catch up now. Once we get home, unload it all, pop it out on the table, and then we can show you exactly what we got in the half a cow order. there all up nine 
boxes, I think that was. What, one, two, and they're all really clearly labeled up and really well packaged up as well. So you probably notice some of these say freezer and some of them say chiller. And that is because, as I mentioned, we did actually get some frozen. That's not a normal thing for these guys though. So it is probably worth just keeping that in mind if you do purchase from this farm. Normally you would get it fresh, but because they were actually really accommodating when I couldn't pick up the meat right on when it was ready and we were actually away. So I needed to pick it up a couple of days later. They actually said they could freeze up some of the sausages and mints and things like that for me. And uh, that's why there's a couple of these boxes that say freezer and uh, other ones that say chiller. Actually, I think the offal that I ordered as well was also frozen up too, which is why there's a few freezer ones. In terms of the packaging, you can see what they've done is they've kind of popped them in these really good cooler bags. So that's, oh, sorry, cooler boxes. And that's made it really nice and easy for us to kind of pick up and load that right into the back of the car. I as I mentioned, didn't know if we were going to need eskies and things like that. When I was first making my order, they made it really clear when I reached out that this is kind of how to be packaged. And yeah, it's made it nice and easy to be able to get it home. And what they did as well was they popped in some of these, these little cooler packs. You can kind of see as I open that up in the top here, what they've done is they put in like little ice packs. And that has meant that that stayed nice and cool all the way home, which is good. It was about probably a 100k drive for us to get all of this from the farm to our house. Obviously, how far it would be for you from a property that you might get them from is going to be different. But yeah, it wasn't too bad. Everything stayed nice and cool. And uh, yeah, I think that blanket trick definitely helped as well as having a good day for it. It's about 20, I think it's like 22 degrees or something out there today can get a bit warm in the back tray of the ute but um yeah i think having them nicely packed like this has definitely helped in terms of getting them home nice and cold Alrighty, you reckon we maybe pop the boxes on the ground and then we can start lifting stuff out on the table to start sorting out what we've got you reckon that's a good plan yeah. Alrighty, now we officially have boxes of meat everywhere what I've tried to do is get some of the chiller stuff on this side because I'm thinking there's probably more of like the steaks and roasts and stuff over here. And then we're going to get stuck into some of these frozen boxes, which should be more of the offal. Ooh, what's that one? Liver. And what have we got? Another liver and sausages and stuff like that as well. Okay. Now with this volume of meat, I'm thinking to keep a bit of order in the freezer so we can grab things out easily what we do is use some of the green bags like from the supermarket just to keep like things together so I might go grab some of those now so hubby's just been pulling out a lot of the sausages one of the things I liked about these guys is they were doing like a preservative free style sausage so there's not all different flavors and stuff they all are all just kind of normal plain beef sausage but without a lot of nasties in them um, Hubby did just do a little bit more wrapping on those just to give them a bit of an extra level of protection so they last in the freezer. With the sausages, they do say that they don't vacuum seal those and that's because they are kind of a bit softer and can compress if they vacuum seal them. So that's why they come on the trays. But uh, yeah, just to give them that extra protection. We've got a bit more Glad Wrap on those now. Now lots and lots of mints is starting to come out. <laughs> you can jump in and stick that on there as well. Um, yeah, lots of mint obviously in a order of this size. I think there's another box just down here that I haven't even started pulling out yet. And um, yeah, what did we just pull out? What well, is that more there? Oh, that's the um, that's the sausage mints. So this is a different sort of mints. This one here that they actually use for making sausages. And I was pretty excited to get this one because this is not something you often really see normally on the shelves in the supermarkets, at least not a, a good quality one that's not full of like salt and stuff. And again, this is like a preservative free one. I see a lot of the American homesteaders cooking with this and it's not something I've really used a lot of because we don't really have access to it here. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm looking forward to maybe trying some of those breakfast casseroles and things like that that they do. And instead of using like the regular mints like this that I'd normally use in stuff like the sausage rolls or pasties and stuff, having a go at using some of this one instead. 
Now, we've started pulling out a lot of the offal already as well, because they were in these frozen boxes. Now, before I talk to you too much about the bits that we have here, I do just want to talk about a conversation that I did have with the farmer when we were there. They were saying there'd been some changes at the abattoir, and as a result of that, we probably wouldn't be able to get offal from them again easily kind of in the future. Um, they did make this really easily easy for us, but I will say it sounded like it wasn't actually too easy for them because there was a bit of a change in policy after we'd made the order. And the farmer actually kind of negotiated to get the offal for us. Um, but it does sound like that's something we might not be able to do so easy again in the future, which is a bit of a bugger. But I thought I'd better highlight that just in case anybody does make an order and, you know, you kind of expect the offal that might not happen again. Um, yeah, but we were very lucky that they did manage to kind of negotiate and actually bought back some of the offal so that we could still get it with the order. And what we got was some cheek here. So it's going to be really nice to kind of slow roast or slow cook in the winter up some beef cheeks. We've got some heart. This one's going to be a really interesting cook at some stage. That is the tongue. Not something that we've done before, but uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of interested to give that a go. I've got memories of being a kid and kind of having sliced tongue really thin on sandwiches and... I don't know, I think the perception of it as a kid was probably a bit scary, but as an adult, pretty keen to give that a go again. Again, not something you really see normally in the shops. Uh, what have we got? More heart there. We've got some liver. In fact, there's a few packs of liver here. We've got one, two, three big lots of liver. And we've also got some tail as well. So lots of offal to work with there. And I think... That was it from the boxes, or was there more in this one? Ah, no, this is something different again. So this is also, I think this was one of our last frozen boxes. And in this one here, this is my fat. And I'm really excited to get a hold of fat to do a bit of tallow making. So that there, I'm gonna pop in the fridge and then tomorrow, I'm going to have a go at doing some tallow and that's going to be in another episode as part of this kind of series of how we're going to use this half a cow. And the other thing we have here is bones. So that's a nice bag of bones that again, I'm going to process that tomorrow. So I'll pop it in the fridge just now, but uh, I'm still on the fence. I'm thinking either of making a faux stock and canning that up or making some beef stock. But uh, that there will definitely make a nice yummy stock for one of those two things. So that's all of the first five boxes of meat. All of the mince, all the offal, the fat, the bones, our sausages, and also that sausage mince as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all of this into our freezer because this is all the frozen boxes that we had and then we'll get in and we'll open up the chiller boxes. Before we pack them away, have you just made a good point? It'd be good to know exactly what the weights are in each of these um, mince packs. So let's have a bit of a look. No, not half a kilo. They're actually, well, that one there is about 860. Oh, it's bigger than I thought. Hmm. Maybe let's just check another one or two and then we kind of have a bit of an idea when we do cooks of what kind of quantity we're working with. And that one there is kind of about 8.30. So yeah, if we say maybe 800 to 8.50 for each one of those when we're cooking. Well, that ended up being about 34, if I counted that correctly. Ooh, packs of mince. And that's just the straight up mince, not the sausage mince. So that'll keep us going for a little while because we do like cooking a fair bit with mints, so it's good to have quite a lot of mints in the freezer. Hopefully putting it in these bags, once we put it in the freezer, means we'll be able to get access to it nice and easy and uh, not make it too chaotic in there. Now we don't have one of those humongous, humongous deep freezers, so it's going to be a little bit of Tetris to get everything to fit in here today. So this is what the freezer's looking like in terms of the space that we've got to fit everything in today. We've got a few kind of bits and bobs left from just normal butcher and shop runs. Some of our crab and fish that we catch ourselves. 
This is all our lamb that's left from the three that we did this year, and just a couple of other random bits and pieces, including a watermelon, which probably seems like a weird thing that is in my freezer, but we were going to have some cold watermelon just before we went away this weekend. I forgot about it. So now I've got a frozen bowling ball in here. <laughs> Once I take that out, that's going to free up a bit of space though. bags for the mints was a good theory but they're just taking up too much room so hubby's finding it's easier just to lay them flat in the bottom while hubby continues on with those ones i'm going to head over here and start unpacking these chiller boxes as i'm pulling these out i'm actually kind of noting that even though i did say to pack it for four they're not actually in packs for four so that's like one rump there there's two there, so it's probably something we need to just keep in mind as we're doing the cooking, um, not cooking, as we're pulling things out to use, that we're actually kind of pulling out the right amounts for a cook. Yeah, but some of them are in fours, like the porterhouses and, ooh, gee, they look good. Alrighty, so that's everything we got out of those chiller bags. And that's, you're writing all this down, aren't you? Yeah. All right, we've got five porterhouse, two of the eye fillets. So they're cut into steaks and there's four in each of those. The rumps we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven packs but they are all a little bit different. So we do just need to keep in mind that's not necessarily gonna be seven meals for our family of four, because some of these, it is just an individual steak in. So we do just need to be mindful of that when we pull them out. We've got a skirt. Ooh, these ones say scotches, but they, they're actually ribeyes, aren't they? And what do we got? One, two, oh my goodness three and those are an absolute favorite in our house so they are going to go down well we've got beef schnitties one pack two three four five of those nice big thor's hammer so this one here is not shanked but i think there was another one here somewhere i thought there was one that was actually kind of like with the um frenching or is there two in there that is just one. Hmm, are we missing meat? Anyway, let's keep going. Blade. One, two blade roasts. Beef ribs. Oh, look at those. Two lots of beef rib. Yum. Uh, did we get the top sides? No, we didn't. One, two, three four of the top sides with the silver side I did the 50 50 because you can choose corned or you can choose just your normal kind of unpickled and there's two of them that are corned and there's two just kind of regular silver side and that's that oh, there is more what have we got in this one <laughs> that's the one I was thinking because she actually showed me this one there about how the two had been cut differently with the Thor's hammers and this one here this is the one that was actually French so you can kind of see the bone exposed on this one here unlike this one here they'll obviously both cook up equally well in fact this one here will get even more good meat off of Obviously, we've still got the meat from this one here because we bought the half side, but the meat on this bit here, instead, it would have probably gone into the uh, either the sausage mints or the regular mints or our sausages. Ah, and we had a top side roast as well. Nice. So that's everything we got out of the chiller boxes. How importantly, we need to work out which one of these are we going to put aside for doing a bit of jerky this afternoon. Oyster blade. I think I missed that one too. Use topside roast. Yeah. So one thing 
I do want to point out before we pop all this in the freezer is the packaging. We do use a few different butchers when we do buy and obviously from the supermarket as well at times. And the one thing that we absolutely hate is when you put bulk stuff in your freezer and it ends up getting freezer burned and ruined. Whereas with these guys, I am absolutely loving the way they've packaged everything up. It's all kind of vacuum sealed, which means we're not going to get issues with the freezer burn. But the other thing I'm loving is this labeling because with this amount of meat, it'd be really easy to put it in the freezer and really lose sight of what you have. Whereas all of this is beautifully labeled. So we're gonna be able to see, even when it's all frozen up really readily, what everything is. But yeah, I definitely reckon it's time that we now get all of this in the freezer. Alrighty, husband, super important question. Which one of these are we gonna have for dinner? Um, I reckon we get a couple of rumps. Rumps? Hmm. All right. Which one do you got your eye on? I haven't got my eye on any of them yet, but <laughs> I think I'm still organising the freezer. The porterhouses. These ones are the porterhouses. I haven't looked at porterhouses. Check those out. Well, let's go porterhouse. Alrighty, well for tomorrow, what do you reckon about me keeping out some of the beef ribs and doing some beef ribs in the solar oven? That sounds good. Yep, done. Definitely at that moment of, is this all going to fit? Now we've kind of given up on the idea of the bags because they just were not going to fit in here at all. But Hubby's doing a good job of doing a bit of Tetris here. Kind of squeezing things into every available nook. It's not going to be as easy to kind of get to everything when we're trying to find stuff. But uh, yeah, at least we're going to be able to get it all in there. That's our freezer all packed up. Everything has managed to fit just. There is a few things that are out though. And if I wasn't preserving some of this stuff, I think we actually might've been in trouble for space, but I am thankfully going to be doing a little bit of canning of some meals. So I'm gonna do some like beef stewy sort of uh, jarred up meals. That's meant I have a little bit of meat still sitting in the fridge that I'll be using to actually jar up and make that shelf stable. There's also going to be some tallow that I'll be doing. So I didn't have to put any of that fat in here. That's also all gone in the fridge until I can process that up. The other thing that is in the fridge at the moment is some meals for the next couple of nights. And a couple of those are some nice big ones like the beef ribs. So that's again, something I haven't had to jam in here and hubby hasn't had to uh, try and find a spot for. The bones have also gone into the fridge. So they're also not taking up space in here. Uh, what else are we going to be doing? Oh, jerky. So a lot of the top side, we've kept that aside. We're going to be doing jerky making with that. And oh my goodness, I think there's still a couple of other plans of foot as well. But what I'm going to do is actually put those in separate videos for you guys. And we're going to have some kind of like individual videos where I show you how we do the tallow. And that is a bit of a first for us, but I've got lots of amazing tips off the Aussie Homesteaders community that uh, is guiding me in my first go at doing the tallow. Um, I'll be doing a separate video on the canning of the uh, shelf stable beefy meal as well. And yeah, we'll definitely be doing one of the jerky too. And as I mentioned, I think there's a couple of other things that we'll also be doing. Anyway, guys, I think that is probably enough for this one video. It's definitely been a meaty one. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy following along with the other videos that are going to follow this one. So thanks as always for joining and catch you later. Oh, we're not going to be short of beef for a while. <laughs>